have been watching with us every Sunday that we've been streaming, welcome and happy Easter. If this is the first time that you've joined us, welcome. And we are so glad that you've chosen to spend Easter with us today. This Resurrection Sunday, we just remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. We remember his life and ministry here on earth, but on Easter we celebrate that not only he died, but he rose again so that we can have the hope of heaven and the hope of a purpose while Amen. we live here on this earth. So friends, happy Easter and just join with us as we worship the risen Jesus today. Good morning. I don't know about you, but this makes me want to celebrate Jesus and who he is. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we could ever ask or think. That's the God that we serve. Jesus, he provided victory for us. And so would you just worship with us this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Because God is able. He will never fail. He is almighty. God, greater than all we seek, greater than all we ask, he has done great things, lifted up, he defeated the grave, raised to life, our God is able, in his name we over.
resurrection we celebrate your sacrifice for each of us God and I just pray that each person who is listening today each person who is watching just be overwhelmed by your name be overwhelmed by the hope in your name dear Jesus we just thank you and we praise you in your name we pray amen Amen. Well, Amen. friends, I'm going to be honest with you this morning as I was uh, just sitting here in an almost empty room worshiping Jesus on this Easter morning. I was just telling God and maybe even complaining a little bit that this is so weird. It's so weird to, um, to be talking to a camera right now instead of seeing your faces. It's so different to be celebrating Easter each at our own houses instead of collectively at uh, a church on Easter Sunday. I know that uh, many of you, like myself, um, grew up coming to church every Easter, right? Every Easter Sunday, we spent in God's house worshiping him and praising him. And that looks different this year. And as I was just kind of sharing my heart with God, he just reminded me that on the first Easter, the, uh, the Christians weren't gathering together, right? If we remember, Mary was going to the tomb to find Jesus, and she found the tomb what? She found it empty. And that just really spoke to my heart this morning, and I want to encourage you with that today, that I think that Jesus is just bringing us back maybe to that first Easter. Everybody wasn't gathered together but they still celebrated, right? They still celebrated Easter. And I just encourage you and challenge you this morning that whatever your Easter looks like today, celebrate Jesus. He's the same. Just because we're in an empty room doesn't mean that we can't celebrate the empty tomb that, we, that the uh, disciples and Mary found on Easter. So I just want to encourage you with that this morning. We have a couple of announcements here that I want to make sure that you're aware of. Um, we are still meeting online for the next couple of weeks. We will keep you updated via email and social media about when we can, in fact, meet together again. But for now, uh, on Sundays, we're meeting online. And then um, Wednesday nights, we are not meeting until further notice. But we will definitely keep you updated on that. Also, we love you. We pray for you guys often. If you need anything, uh, please reach out to us. If you need prayer, if you need groceries, if you need just somebody to talk to, we are here for you, and we would love to connect with you. So reach out to us if you need anything. Also, church, I hope that you're connecting with each other during this time. Again, I know we've said this a couple of times over the past few weeks. A lot of us have some extra free time. Take advantage of that free time to connect with each other and to fellowship. It might be different. It might look different. You might have to be a little bit creative in how you do that. But I would just challenge you and encourage you to do that. Reach out to somebody um, and just connect with them uh, during this time. 
We are going to uh, receive our offering today. Again, I just want to thank you guys so much for your faithfulness in giving. It's so important that uh, we be faithful in our giving all the time, but especially in times when it would be easy to forget about sending our tithes and our offerings to uh, church. So thank you for those of you who have been faithful in giving, and I just ask that you please continue uh, to be faithful in your giving to God and his church and the mission that he has uh, for our church and our community right now. So you can, uh, two, there's two ways that you can give. First is online. You can go to faithnewcumberland.com backslash give. Uh, that address is uh, right on the screen right now. Or you can mail in your offering to 806 Fishing Creek Road, New Cumberland, Pennsylvania, 17070. Let's just pray for our offering and for our message this morning. Dear Jesus, we just thank you so much for your provision in each of our lives, God. That looks different for each of us, but we thank you for always providing and always um, supplying our, uh, all of our needs, dear Jesus. And as we get back to you today on this Easter Sunday, we just ask that you take our offerings and that you multiply them, dear Jesus, and that you use them to reach the needs in our community and around the world, dear Jesus. I just ask that you bless Pastor Josh. I just ask that you touch him, anoint him, dear Jesus. I just ask that um, you just be with him this morning. The enemy has uh, tried to come against uh, him and his family this week, and I just ask, dear Jesus, that um, you use him in a special way. We know that when that happens, it's because you have a special word for us, and I just ask that you just anoint him right now, God. I just ask that you touch him, help him to just speak clearly the message that you've laid on his heart for us today. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jess. Good morning, everyone. Happy Resurrection Sunday out there in Cyberland. So great to see everyone. I'm imagining all your beautiful faces here with us. As Pastor Jess mentioned, we can't be here together in person, but we can gather together online. And uh, so that's what we are going to do this year for Easter. So I pray that your family is healthy and uh there are many blessings. Maybe you're struggling with um, a little bit of depression or anxiety this time. I'd encourage you to focus on the blessings that surround you right now. Think about what you do have, because I know it's so easy to focus on what we don't have right now or what things that we're missing. So maybe I'd encourage you just to focus today would be a great day just to be thinking about what are those blessings that God is providing for you even right now, to celebrate Easter at home, watching this, being a part of still the family of God, the body of Christ. And uh, so I encourage you with that. And today is Resurrection Sunday, and I've asked my, my big helper here, Caleb, to help me read today's passage found in Matthew 28, verses 1 to 7. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them or swipe to them. And uh, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 7. The Sabbath day was not over. It was dawn on the first day of the week. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a powerful earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven. The angel went to the tomb. He rolled back the stone and sat on it. He, his body, shone like lightning, his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Don't be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said he would. He would come and see the place where he was lying. Li lying. Go quickly, tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him now, I have told you. Good, Good reading. Thanks, Caleb. Thanks for your help this morning. You can, you can have a seat. You're welcome. You want to sit here and watch me <laughs> preach this morning, or you can have a seat this morning too. So I'll leave that up to you. I really appreciate you reading the scripture today. 
Resurrection. Today I want to talk just for a few minutes this morning. This title, Jesus Turns Fear to Hope. Think about resurrection. Think about Easter today. Maybe you're thinking about a number of things, but I want us to focus our attention on this thought that Jesus turns fear into hope. I'm going to read the scripture again, and we're going to kind of just meditate on what, what the Lord is speaking to us through his word. And I pray that this would be encouraging for us, that we would uh, see things differently, we would experience things differently, that we would receive Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. If you're watching this and Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, I pray that today would be that day that you would say, Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus, be my Savior. Jesus, turn my fear into hope. Well, let's pray. Jesus, we love you today. I thank you for this Resurrection Sunday where we can gather online. We can encourage one another through our comments. We can worship you. We can read the scripture. We can meditate on your word today. But most importantly, Lord, we're here to worship you. We're here to, sit, to remind ourselves that, Jesus, you turn fear to hope, to remind ourselves that, Jesus, you are on the throne, to remind ourselves that that tomb is empty, and, Jesus, you are highly exalted. We thank you for that truth today in Jesus' name. And someone said, what was that? And someone said, Amen. I know you're doing it as you're watching today. I know it's a little funny. Verse 1, let's look at this. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week. Let's just reflect on this for a moment. It says, it says there's three words. It's, 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 it's speaking about the Sabbath is the first idea. Sabbath, what is Sabbath? Sabbath is a, what, a day of rest. It's a, a day of acknowledging that God is in control. It's a day of rest. It's a day of acknowledging that God is in control. And so it says, after the Sabbath, whew, oh, Caleb just vanished on me. <laughs> after the Sabbath, what? When? Not at night, not in the middle of the day. It says, at dawn. What is dawn? Dawn is a, a new day. It's when a new day is beginning. Literally, it means when the light just begins to appear to show you that the sun is about to rise. A few years ago, we were at the beach, and I said, hey, let's, let's go watch the sunrise. And this is, this is just such a fun thing to do, especially at the beach. You could just see the horizon and the ocean and all that. So we were there. I think it was the girls. I think Kayla was small and sleeping at that time. But we, could, we were waiting on the beach, and it was dark. It was just kind of foggy. And, but we could tell there was just this first appearance of light. It was a hint that the sun was about to break, and that's the period of dawn. It was just like this. It's dark, but you know that something is coming. And so in the Scripture, it says there's a Sabbath time. It's after this period of rest. It's after this period of acknowledging that God is in control. It's at dawn. It's at this new beginning, and it says it's at the first day of the week. Not the last, not the middle, not when, it's not hump day. It's the first day of the week. It's a brand new week. Have you ever wished you could push the reset button? You know, you went through a week and you said, I just wish I could push the reset button. This week isn't going so well. Let's just push reset. Well, Mary and the other Mary, they're walking to the tomb. It's right after Sabbath. It's three days after Jesus has been crucified on the cross. It's at dawn. There's a new beginning to the day, and it's at the first day of the week. It's at a new beginning of their week. These three word pictures, Sabbath, dawn, first day of the week, they speak of what? They speak of hope. They speak of refreshment. They speak of new life and new beginnings. But the next picture that the gospel writer uses to describe the scene is a tomb. Isn't that interesting? He connects two very different ideas. He connects life and hope and, and, and belief and faith into death. It's a tomb. 
verse 1 continues, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. What is a tomb? Tomb is a place to go when you're dead. It's a place of death. You don't go to a tomb to celebrate something normally, right? Well, I'm just going to go to so-and-so's grave, and we're just going to have a party there. No, you usually have parties and celebrations at someone's house or some. But a tomb is a what? It's a place of death. It's a place of completion. It's a place of finality. And it's after this day of rest. It's it's at this time when the day is about to break through. It's at this first day. It's when the week is just starting. Mary goes to the tomb of Jesus. Typically, you don't go to a tomb to find hope or joy. Rather, you go to a tomb to encounter loss and sorrow. I want to say that again. Typically, you don't go to a tomb to find hope and joy. You go to a tomb to experience and to encounter loss and sorrow. And before that first Resurrection Sunday, before that very first Easter, that is exactly what a tomb provided. It was only a place to grieve. It was only a place to mourn the loss of life. Question for us. What tombs have you encountered lately? What dark situations have you walked into that you say, you know, this is like a place not of life, not of hope. It's a place of death. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe you've lost something or someone that is important to you. Maybe a job or a relationship. Maybe being just distant from your family members. I know it's so hard at this time. It's like grandparents are far away. We're far away from parents and, and just trying to interact through phone and FaceTime and Zoom and all the other ways to, to use technology to connect, but still you feel like you're missing something. We're watching. We're worshiping online. We, we, we're grateful that there is this tool, but we still feel like we're missing that relationship with people. We call and we text and we do all these things, but we still feel like we're missing something. During this extended season of quarantine, it's been extremely difficult hearing these stories of people dying alone, people grieving alone, people having to delay funerals and delay all these things, people having to be at hospitals all alone, at nursing homes and retirement homes all alone. It reminds me of our story, the two Marys. They're going to the tomb of Jesus all alone. Maybe you're tuning in this morning and you feel all alone. You feel like you are locked inside of a tomb or you've entered recently into a tomb. I want you to know that you are not alone. As I read that story, I see a glimmer of hope and I see a glimmer of encouragement for you today that these two Marys went to this place of death on this new day at this dawn of a new week, and God was about to bring hope to their life. He was about to turn fear into hope for them, and he can do the same for you. It makes me wonder. It makes me ask this question, too. The two Marys, they're going to the tomb all alone. It's like, well, where are the other disciples? Where, where's John and where's Peter? Where's these great men of faith? And why is it only the two Marys who are going to the tomb of Jesus? Well, there was a lot of disbelief. There was a lot of fear. There was a lot of, maybe this word is, impacts you. I know it speaks to me. There's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of uncertainty today turn on the news, it's the main question is, oh, when are we going to turn this thing back on? When's this gonna, when are we going to get back to life as normal? It's just this uncertainty. We don't know how long. When's school going to be over? Now we know school's off for the rest of the school year. And all these uncertain questions. 
the disciples at this moment lived in a place in a season of great uncertainty. They had it all worked out. They knew what the Messiah would do. They knew what Jesus was sent to do, and they thought they knew exactly how it would play out, but it didn't play out exactly as they had thought. Jesus, in their mind, was dead on a cross and dead in a tomb. Fear, disbelief, uncertainty. Fear asks such questions as, what if? Disbelief says, this can't be happening. And uncertainty asks, what now? Maybe you've asked similar questions. What if? What if this happens? Or what if this takes place? What if my job does this? What if this never reopens? And what if, what if, what if? What if? Or maybe this can't be happening. I can't believe I was planning my wedding. I was planning these special moments, and all of a sudden, life and the world is just shut down. What now? And then you begin to wrestle through that uncertainty. What now? What's it going to look like when it reopens? What, what is life going to be when we're all back together? Fear, disbelief, uncertainty. In the midst of this fear, in the midst of this uncertainty, the two Marys make their way to the tomb of Jesus. Let's continue reading. It says in verses 2 through 4, There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. In the midst of grief, in the midst of loss and fear and disbelief, in the midst of uncertainty, the angel of the Lord comes down from heaven. Think about that. It's not just a new day. It's not just a dawn of a new week. It's a dawn of a new year. The angel of the Lord ascends from heaven. He comes down to the tomb. He rolls back the stone, and he sits on it. What a picture. What an image. What a powerful declaration of the authority and the power of Almighty God. Here's a resurrection principle for us today. When you think your tomb has got you locked in, God is sitting outside your empty grave. When you think your tomb has got you locked in, God is sitting outside. The stone is rolled away, and he's sitting on top of the stone. That situation that you feel locked in, that, 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 that circumstance that you feel like just is just walled you in, Jesus has rolled that stone away. Jesus, by his authority and his power, he's sitting on that stone. He is turning our fear to hope. Let's continue reading. Verses 5 and 6, the angel said to the women, Don't be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Here's another principle for us, another resurrection principle. The tomb could not hold Jesus because tombs are for dead people. The tomb could not hold Jesus because tombs are for dead people. Jesus was not dead. Jesus was alive. How do we apply that? What does that look like? Here's one way we can see it. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, tombs are now a place of hope, of new life and new beginnings. I want to say that again. If you're taking notes, I want you to write that down. I want you to put that in the comments. I want you to share that to whatever you're doing. I want you to tell someone. Because of the resurrection of Jesus, tombs are now a place of hope, of new life and new beginnings. We no longer have to fear tombs. We no longer have to fear death because of Jesus. And because of Jesus, death is the doorway to new life. That's why the rest, the next verse is so important for us today. Verse 7 says this, Then go quickly, 
and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. The last point is this. It's not just a principle to understand. It's not just a truth to know in our mind. It's a mission to carry out. Jesus said, go and tell others. Our mission is this. Go and tell others that Jesus is alive because the miracle of resurrection is not to be kept to yourself. It's not just a principle. It's not just a truth. It's not just saying, wow, isn't that great that Jesus is alive and awesome, that's cool, and that he turns fear into hope, and there's a mission. Go tell people that Jesus is alive because his resurrection miracle is not to be kept to yourself. Why? Because the miracle of resurrection is that Jesus turns fear to hope. Jesus turns fear fear to hope. And so this is what happened. This is kind of that next conclusion of that part of the story. It says this, verses 8 and following. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Question for you as we wrap things up this morning. What tomb are you facing today? What situation right now is you feel locked in by, you feel that it's causing fear in your life? Maybe today, tombs are a place only of death, only of loss, only of grief. Jesus says, I conquered the grave. I conquered the tomb. I made it possible to turn fear into hope. Jesus says this in John chapter 11. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am, Jesus says, the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And then he asks this question that I ask you today. Do you believe this? Not do you wish this or, oh, I hope that would happen or, man, I I imagine that could have happened. Do you believe this? Jesus isn't looking for your wishful thinking. He's looking for your heart. He's looking for you to say, yes, Jesus, I believe that you are the resurrection. Jesus, you are the life. I believe completely in you. Will you put your faith and your trust in Jesus today. Would you bow your heads and your hearts? Would you pray with me this morning? Jesus, I thank you that you died on that cross. Jesus, I thank you that you went into that tomb. But Jesus, I thank you that you conquered the grave. That that stone has been rolled away. That you are alive. And because of that, we have hope today. We have hope in you. We have hope that we can have life in you forever. Jesus, we believe this. We believe, Jesus, that you are the resurrection and that you are the life.
Jesus, come be Lord and Savior of my life today. Help me to live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. We thank you for your victory, for your grace, for your strength. We praise you for who you are and all that you're doing in our lives. Help us to live not by fear, not in fear, but help us to live in hope. That you are the resurrection and the life. That Jesus, you turn dead places into a place of hope, new life and new beginnings. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace.